Back to the show, we'll an explosive new book about the British royal family hit shelves today, supposedly setting the record straight on some of the most talked about rumours in recent royal history. It's the fifth book from royal biographer Robert Hardman, who's spent more than 25 years closely following the royal family, and we're very pleased to say he joins us live now from London. Robert, good to see you. Now, first, before we Good get morning. to your book, we just want to ask you about that breaking news this morning, our time, about Princess Kate and the King and their respective surgeries. What's going on? Well, yeah, that was something of a, a surprise to, to us this afternoon. First, a statement from Kensington Palace saying that uh, the Princess of Wales uh, has, is in hospital at the moment. She, she has undergone uh, an operation uh, and she's going to be in hospital for a couple of weeks and will be out of action until Easter. Uh, and then within two hours, there was another statement from Buckingham Palace to say that the king, following a checkup earlier in the week, is undergoing uh, a procedure next week um, for um, an enlarged prostate. And he was happy to um, put that information out there. That's quite sort of unusually sort of candid and detailed uh, um, uh, info, which you wouldn't expect normally from uh, from from the palace. But uh, the king has said that, or let it be known that you know he's keen that um, other people go and get checked mm. out for this. That, mm. that, that that you know it's people ought to know that this is what applies to kings applies to to everyone else. So, is it? Uh, yeah, we, we, you know, there's obviously concern and sympathy, but mm. um, you know, I, I think everyone will ex expect the king will be back in action much sooner than the princess. No, I think it's um, it's it's a good thing to raise awareness, um, and I'm glad that he sees it that way. I mean, is it any wonder mm. they're all crook in Buckingham Palace after what Harry's done to them? <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, the the, the Harry saga goes on. Uh, it's been going on now. It's about to, what are we into? About to enter year four, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, you, you, you allude there to the the book I'm bringing out today, which is is really a, a portrait of the king of his of, of his new reign. But obviously, in it, a uh, key part of the story is relations with California with Harry and Meghan, um, and uh, yeah, they they are um, they're, they're still a lot of uh, you know a lot of bridges to rebuild. Um, but you know the, the king is an optimist. Uh, he, he definitely his his view certainly is that you know the door remains open, mm. uh, and that, uh, that that whatever's whatever's happened in the past, well, you know, perhaps one day we can we can mend things a bit. I think the relationship with uh, between the brothers will be take a little longer to to, to rearrange. Mm -hmm. why, why do you think that is? What, what's what's been the biggest thing for those two? Well, I think it's it's not so much. What Harry has said is, is the way he's said it. I mean, mm. William has always been an intensely private man. He guards the privacy of his family uh, very closely. Uh, and and a, a, a sort of cumulative effect of first Harry and Meghan's interview with Oprah Winfrey, um, throwing out all sorts of allegations. I mean, that took everybody completely by surprise. Then a, a six-part um, Netflix series mm. um, at the end. 22 followed last year by the publication of Harry's memoir and I think the memoir uh, was particularly wounding for William because it, yeah there were some you know embarrassing uh, conversations and bits and pieces in there overall actually I thought it was a rather affectionate portrait of both William Kate Charles and even Camilla but mm. the fact was for William it's the fact that, that his brother was prepared to just just chuck this stuff out there and, and and regale the world with stories of you know childhood intimacies and sort of conversations they had when they were little boys. And to him, that stuff's sacred. And, and I think mm. he feels very wounded by a lot of that. It would be hard to believe that anything more could actually be revealed. But one of the more shocking recent revelations in the book was that the Queen didn't actually approve of the Sussexes choosing the name Lilibet for their daughter. In fact, quite the opposite. Well, yes, it was It was slightly more complicated than that. I mean, the, 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 the Sussexes rang her up and sort of said, look, we're going to call our, our daughter Lilibet. Um, and, uh, you know, the, king, the Queen was effectively, you know, there was much you could say, really, after that. Mm. Um, and they then put it out uh, that the, the Queen, had, you know, was entirely you know, given this, this choice of name, um, her blessing. And, and you know, it, there is a certain uh, intimacy to it. I mean, there's no, nobody else in the world called Lilla, but it was the Queen's nickname. Um, and anyway, the, the, the BBC then put out a report that, no, the Queen had not been asked. She'd just been told. Uh, the Sussexes um, immediately reached for their lawyers and expected the palace to support their version of events. And um, the palace, from the palace, was a resounding silence. So effectively, the palace, the queen, 
was saying, nah, you know, um, it's not exactly how, how we, you know, recollections may vary. And and in the course of writing my book, yeah, I spoke to someone very, very senior who said um, that the, the Queen was as angry as they'd ever seen her. And that's saying something. Wow. And it's not, it's not, it's not because of um, the choice of name. I mean, you know, that, that maybe she had her views on that. It's the fact that she was then expected to, to agree with a version of events that simply yeah. wasn't how she remembered. And, yeah. and the one thing you always knew with the Queen, you don't put words in her mouth. Yeah. She's absolutely, she, she makes her own decisions. You don't say, well, look, I think, you know, could you, could you sort of support this version of events? And she, right. she didn't. Look, um, that's one thing you, every family knows around the world. And, every, and to this, I guess we all have in common, you just don't mess with a grandnan, <laughs> ever. Especially if it's Queen. Leave him out of it's it. It's an interesting <laughs> read. Thank you so much Thanks for being so with much, us. Robert. Appreciate it. Well, events across the royal calendar are being cancelled, with both the King and Princess of Wales needing serious surgery, and Prince William clearing his schedule to care for his wife. Associate Editor at the Daily Mirror, Russell Myers, is live with more. Hey, Rusty. Gee, it was a big day there. Uh, good morning, mate. Well, I mean, it was. I mean, two statements right out the blue today. First of all, Kensington Palace announcing that the Princess of Wales is actually in hospital as we speak. She has had successful abdominal surgery and she's going to remain there for between 10 to 14 days. So a long stay for her, uh, you know, months of recovery. Uh, we won't hear too much from the palace about uh, what the nature of the operation is. But so although the, the Wales is certainly downing tools, William being there for his wife and uh, cancelling all engagements for the foreseeable future. I guess the worry, the worry is, I mean, it's been such a busy um, schedule um, in uh, Great Britain for the last 18 months, if not longer. Uh, she's so fit. Um, she looks so, so fit and well and kind of came out of nowhere. Well, yeah, t totally. I mean, you could, I was just speaking to somebody at the Palace last week uh, confirming a trip to go uh, overseas to, to see British troops and say thank you for all they're doing um, constantly for their work overseas. And that was due to happen in the next couple of weeks. So that was definitely in the diary, um, you know, just a few days ago. And now this has come out of the blue. They have said it. Well, she wasn't rushed to hospital. It was planned surgery. I mean, that could have been a couple of days. Mm. But she will stay there for up for a couple of weeks. And then it will uh, be this sort of 8 to 12 weak recovery. So, you know, the, the slate has been completely wiped clean for the foreseeable future. King Charles, on the other hand, uh, very forthcoming about um, he's got an enlarged prostate that he'll have an operation on. I think it's a great thing that he's come forward. All of that deliberate. Well, it is, of course. I mean, you know, all about awareness and we need to be talking about these things. There's a lot of men who suffer from enlarged prostates. You know, these things can get a lot worse if they're not seen to. 52,000 men just in the UK die from prostate cancer each year. Not that serious for the king, thankfully. He's just going to have a procedure next week where he'll be in and out of hospital in a day or so. But, you know, really good on him because we need to be having these conversations. Sure. And I think that that was certainly targeted. All right. You're going to have a little break now until they're all back on deck. Good on you, Rusty. <laughs> yeah, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, mate. Hey there today, fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my goodness, Carl. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?